Hi, I'm Vincent, and this video is on Python strings, what you can do with them and what you cannot. We will be focusing on operators of strings in this video. A string is a sequence of characters between quotes. It can be with single quotes as well in Python, or double quotes. It doesn't make any difference. We still have the same string. But we cannot mix the quotes up. So I can't start with double quotes and try to end with single quotes. And I can't start with single quotes and try to end with double quotes. So our string, hello world, we now have it, but what can we do to it? We can add more strings onto the end of it. So I can get my string and add in another string. And that will give me a new string with my two strings joined together. So with it being a new string, my original string hasn't been changed. If I want to change my original string, I need to get my the original version of it, add the new string into it, and then store it back into the same variable name. And then that now gives me my string with the two strings joined together. So I can do addition, can I do subtraction? So if I get my string, and I want to take off the word string from the end of it, I get an error. The reason being is that what happens when I want to try and perform this operation of string minus the word string? So do I try to remove the entire of this word just from the end of my string? Or do I try and remove all of the characters, the individual characters that's in this word, from the entire of the original string? So do I try and remove, um, of course, all of these characters, but also all the N's, um, all the R's, all the T's? So partly because of this having the possible different functionalities for performing subtraction, we haven't defined a subtraction for strings as I might want it to do one thing, you might want it to do another thing, and we wouldn't be able to agree, so it hasn't been performed. So if we get our original string back, what else can we do? We've seen plus and subtract. Let's see if we can do multiply. So if I get my string and multiply it by four, then I end up with four copies of my string. And if I use a different number, I will get a different number of joined strings together. So multiply gives you the number you are multiplying by copies of your original string. And it's the same as the addition. It doesn't modify, it gives you a copy. So again, if I want to modify my string, I would have to do the function and store it back into the original variable. And so now I have modified my string. So we can multiply strings and get several copies of the same string joined together. Can we divide them back up again? So if I have my string and I attempt to now divide that by four, is it possible? No, it's not. It doesn't entirely make sense because division is usually reserved just for doing numbers. So we cannot divide. Also, if I tried to divide my string by five, what would I expect to get? Uh, it's not really easy to define. So that's sort of the mathematical operators for strings. There's a couple of other operators that we have, and that's the comparative operators. So I can have a string, say, just a single letter, and I can see if it is less than or greater than uh, the another letter in this example. And A is less than B. Okay. And what if I compare big A with little a? Big A is less than little a. So how does your computer understand that this happens? So the way it does it is because our computers can only understand numbers, we have a way of mapping our characters to numbers, and that's called an ASCII table. And this ASCII table maps every character that's on your keyboard to a particular number. So in the case where we have the capital A, it's mapped to the number 65. And that goes all the way through down to capital Z, which is mapped to number 90. And then the lowercase letters are over here, with little a being given the value 97. And little z 
being given the value 122. And then you'll notice that all the other characters on your keyboard are mapped elsewhere within the table. So that explains why the less than and the greater than symbols work for individual letters. But can we do entire strings? This is just a single letter. Yes, we So I can get string ABC and see if it's less than DCE, which it is true. So what is Python doing here? It might be a bit more of an example if I do ABCD and see if that's less than ABEF. It is true, but why? So the way Python does this is it just does the first letter of each word at the same time and compares those. So the way it works is that it compares just the A of the first string and the A with the second string. But they're both the same so it can't work out an answer. So then it moves to the B and the B. It still cannot work out an answer so it can't tell us anything yet. And then it looks at the C and the E. C is less than E so it can now tell us that this is true. It doesn't even bother to look at the D and the F and compare those because it's found an answer it can give out an answer right away there's no point wasting time looking at the rest of the string this helps because when we are wanting to order our words in a particular manner we want to do it in the way we understand alphabetical ordering and Python's way of doing it gives us that functionality the final two comparators are that you can also do the double equals to see if one string is the same as another string and also to see say if it's not equal to another string and if a string differs by one character in any direction or any difference at all it's not the same it's got to have exactly the same number of characters in exactly the same order and the same characters in there. You can also join the comparing for equality with the less than and greater than signs by using the join of these by seeing if ABC is less than or equal to uh, ABC. So because it is the same, this is now going to return true, whereas before ABC was not less than ABC because they were the same. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to know more about what you can do with strings, please see the following videos on the string methods.